We have in studio right now playing as a band from Los Angeles called Naked Walrus. And I'm just sitting down here monitoring the boards. I just put my content away, all my CDs and records. So, yeah, Naked Walrus. And... WDRD, the wizard, and uh, we're proud to have Naked Walrus uh, in studio with us performing. Thanks so much, guys, for taking the time to visit us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. We're really excited to be here. Uh, the name of the band is Naked Walrus. Any particular reason why or any story behind the title? You know, uh, it's funny because over the years, obviously, that is one of the first questions that we get from anybody. And normally with journalists, when they send us uh, like a, they would send us a template question sheet. When we get that, we usually make up a different story every single time about why we named it Naked Walrus. Um, but, you know, today we'll, we'll kind of just go into the specifics of why we've stuck with that, which is we feel that Naked Walrus is an acronym for uh, being comfortable in your own skin and following your dreams. And so we have really kind of designed this not only as a band but as kind of like a, a a group of creatives that are living out this mentality and lifestyle of naked walrus of this just following your dreams you know so we'll go with that that'll be our story today was it one of those uh things where like i think we need a band name right now uh, naked walrus like oh i guess yeah, now we're stuck with it a random word association while while uh, we we're jamming and just kind of stuck with it. Did you guys ever think of uh, covering uh, I Am the Walrus by the Beatles? Oh, we definitely would love to. And it's funny because uh, we've done a couple of Beatles covers over the years, but it's, it's hard because like everybody knows Beatles songs. So if you mess them up in any way, shape, or form, then you have absolutely ruined it. And so we kind of, um, in general, like we respect covers and we like to learn other people's music but when we're playing live it's not really what we're trying to do you know we're an original band and so we're we're going out there and, and kind of trying to do that but that being said i mean i'm not going to say that you know the walrus and, and lennon and that whole concept you know, that played into the name a little bit too you know you, uh, you mentioned cover bands and you guys being are you from uh, los angeles yeah uh is there still a big uh cover band circuit out there I mean, you know, it's interesting because I think cover band circuit is everywhere now. It's almost more popular in certain markets than original bands. We constantly get asked to play covers, and it's funny. Um, sometimes I feel like people are let down when we're not going to play their favorite BG song. So, um, so yeah, like it's. Um, but I mean, you know, in each music scene, it's all about the community of what the genre is that you're playing. You know, cover covers are. You know, that's that's music for places where. Either they're um, trying to fit a specific genre, like a Zeppelin night, a, a Prince night, like those types of things. Or, I mean, it's a place where people are really just going there to drink and have fun, and, and they don't really care about the live music. And so that's kind of what we run into. Is like, it's not that we don't want to play covers. Um, it's just that we don't want to have to play covers, you know? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a love thing, you know? It's a passion thing, period. Yeah, you guys definitely have uh, some nice uh, melodic vocals which you shouldn't lend to uh, covers I mean, you guys making great music yourselves but uh here, here in chicago um it's become a phenomenon phenomenon for uh for every halloween uh, bands become other bands so if uh, naked walrus uh was to become another band which band would you be Ooh, especially on halloween oh, damn. i mean there's obviously, you know, bands that we would probably individually like to to take on. Uh, like, I think it would be fun to do Oingo Boingo, but I don't think a three-piece is necessarily going to pull off any Oingo Boingo. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, I've been going through, like, a, a punk rock. Like, I'm getting way back into all of, you know, Misfits, Clash, Black Flag, you know, all of that. And so what I would say, if we could do like a Halloween set that would be really jamming for me right now, it would be an awesome Misfits cover kind of a thing. I know that that's like 
outside of our realm per se, but I feel like that is the so coolest Halloween. So it's Boingo, man. But you know, I think it'd be it'd be fun either way. Uh, like if we actually planned it out and we were gonna do something, you know, for Halloween, we'd definitely be into it. You know, I think uh, Hayden, what would you pick? I don't know. Since it's a Halloween thing, I'd kind of go for the the Misfits or like Danzig. Like that would just be, be so much fun. It'd be to play easy sheet. and fun. Yeah. Yeah, Misfits all the way. So if we were going to be our Halloween band switch, it would definitely be Misfits. I'm, I'm going to take the Glenn Danzig, uh, Glenn scream. <laughs> or it'd be cool to mess with people and like dress like Cream or something, you know, like dress like a three piece, but then go and play like, you know, a bunch of Danzig tunes or something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess speaking of three piece, you could, you know, the guys could be Nirvana as well. Hey, hey. that's, that's true. Those are big shoes to fill, but we definitely respect that. You know, that's kind of what our uh, our sound we really try and take from '90s rock. We we love all types of '90s rock bands, alternative bands like Nirvana, you know, Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age. Um, but then you know, like Hayden's always rocking out to Third Eye Blind and uh, like uh, Gin Blossoms, and you know, we're just '90s kids through and through. Yeah, very much so. In, in regards to the LA music scene, where do you guys uh, fit in? I mean, how do they, uh, like, what genre do they put you in? I mean, do you guys perform with a lot of uh, garage bands or a lot of punk bands, or what, what type of music do they uh, book you with? Um, in LA, it's kind of interesting. Although we're an LA band, we try not to play that many LA shows um, just because it's so oversaturated, and we're kind of, like, in this weird realm where they don't know if they should put us with, like, heavy bands or if they should put us with, like, indie pop bands. Like, we're kind of somewhere in the middle where it's, like, we have these, like, melodic choruses, like you said, but then we also have, like, heavy breakdowns. So, yeah, we're either getting put with, like, really heavy bands like Red Fang or we're getting put with, like, super indie bands. Yeah, they like it's it's kind of a mix, you know. We've we've found as this band um, in the sound and with the name and the branding that we're trying to do that we're cutting our own road, you know. And so and we love it that way, and that's kind of a thing. But it's it's really interesting to see. Like before we left Los Angeles, we played the Roxy with the Mad Caddies, and you know, Mad Caddies are awesome, and I love everything that they've ever done. But at the same time, um, I wouldn't necessarily like put us together with Mad Caddies per se. Um, but it went well. You know, we always try and draw in the crowd. Um, like Hayden said, we've played with Red Fang in the past, and they're like a heavy industrial rock band. Just opened up for Foo Fighters. Like, um, but they're like heavy, and their crowd was like a little confused by us with our mel- melodies. Like exactly what you're saying, you know. And so, um, but yeah, like we find ourselves like we want to say that we're a part of the alternative rock scene of Los Angeles. Um, that being said, as Hayden said, with it being oversaturated in certain parts, you know, um, it, it's really interesting. As a musician in a band that's playing originals right now, you're you're seeking out the communities in every city that you go to, and so you know sometimes. Um, you know, LA's scene versus Seattle's scene versus Nashville's scene. They're going to have all kinds of similarities and differences, but at the end of the day, it's like, do you book the brewery to make money? Do you book the local punk rock venue to gain some fans? Or do you do like a DIY experience with local bands to try and really get into that? And so we find ourselves jumping into all spectrums. And like, I, I love playing in a gigantic set, you know, at a huge venue. Like we just played Summerfest and that was amazing. But at the same time, there's this like dark and dingy part of my heart that loves to play in a punk rock club and, and it be the dive bar vibes with stickers everywhere, you know? Yeah, we're we're speaking with uh, members of uh, Naked Walrus here on the Wizard. Um, you, you guys are on tour. Um, have you guys been on tour before? Or is this the first experience? Yeah, we've uh, we've definitely gone out quite a few times. Um, I think the you know longer leg of tours that we've done recently was this past winter. We definitely we uh, put some work ahead of ourselves there. It was the first time that we actually went through, you know, some of these notorious snow states and ski areas and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, driving the Econo line and stuff like that. So that was kind of a first for us, you know, in one way or another. But, I mean, we've been a band for the better part of six years now, and we've pretty much been touring, you know, since, since the conception of it. Yeah, up until now, it's been... Um, 
our goal to try and take over the West Coast. It's easier for us, you know. We don't really up until recently we didn't even have our own mode of transportation. We were renting, and so you know we um, have done, especially over the last two years, a lot of runs up and down between you know, San Diego and Seattle. So we tend to go up and down that. And as Taylor said, we challenged ourselves this winter to do a cold tour. We called it the Burr Tour, and it was uh, rightfully named and a little scary because we're from California, so we don't know like. You guys are from Chicago. You deal with weather. We deal with palm trees and sun all the time. And so, um, so yeah, it was, you know, like right now it's, it's been about kind of putting ourselves out of our comfort zone. And so we got the opportunity earlier this year while we were on the bird tour to play Summerfest. And their thing was, hey, if you're going to play Summerfest, you just got to get out here. And so we took that challenge on. And so, um, you know, everything that we're doing is self-done. You know, we're self-booked. We're DIY through and through. We don't have a manager, agent, label doing anything for us. And so when we take up a goal, it's about us putting our blood, sweat, and tears into it. And so you know, we went and we um, we were able to play the Warp Tour for a couple of days leading into Summerfest, which was really awesome. We're friends with Kevin Lyman. Via, we work in production doing um, festivals and events outside of being in a band. And so Kevin was awesome and was able to help us out there. And then... You know, from that, it was just piecing the dates around the festivals that we had. And so this is not our first tour, but it is our first tour where we are going um, into the East Coast. At, uh, we're not going to the East Coast, but I mean to the Midwest. We, we've never gone past Denver. And so um, every market that we've played since then, you know, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Minneapolis and Minnesota, and, and then now we're in Chicago, this is all foreign to us. And so it's, it's just an experiment, you know, and we find ourselves constantly, uh, you know, figuring it out as we go. Yeah, you opened up with a song called Critic. Oh, have you guys, oh, have you guys seen any reviews of the new album that you put out? No. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've gotten quite a few reviews of our album. Um, they, you know, it's always interesting putting music out into the world because it usually comes out at like almost a year or two after you've really put it into your head or brought it out of your head is probably a better way to say that. And so, um, yeah, I mean, we've gotten really good reviews, and I, I, I am really proud to say that there's been none that have been you know, scolding mean and like just sounded bad. The only thing that we did get from one interview was they said that our lyrics were too positive. And I was a little bummed on that to be real. Well, that's a, that's kind of the funny thing. And it touches down on, on what we were talking about earlier about how uh, sometimes people don't necessarily know how to classify us because we, we get heavy, but then we go really light at times. And, you know, we're not afraid to go in either direction, but um, it's very interesting to actually – sit there and look at a review because, you know, the only thing that we can think of is this this particular person who's writing this review, they're obviously gravitating towards the heavier aspect of our music. And so their comment is based off of, you know, the lyrics being too positive for the musical aspect. And I don't know, I think that's such a funny criticism. Like, hey man, stop being happy. You know, like when has that ever been a legitimate concern of anybody? In, right? in response to that though, our two like new songs that we've been working on in the studio are like uh, a Dark. lot darker uh, material like lyrical content as well as like you know heavier in the musical aspect with dropped tunings and you know stuff like that so like Taylor said we're not afraid to go in either direction we still kind of have our you know sound no matter what yeah and with that it's like um in general, I, I, the, this album that we're touring on right now is called Simple, and it's about complex matters of trying to follow your dreams. And so I would go as far as to say is it's kind of a motivational album to get you out there and, and get you, um, and you being the listener or um, the person who is watching us on stage or, you know, myself <laughs> in, the, in the case of me writing the songs. Um, it was about trying to get through these um, these kind of dark headspaces with a light at the end of the tunnel. And so I can see people hearing these lyrics as um, as something that is positive and too positive. I don't know if that's something that I would throw in there, but you know, it is what it is. And now with the new music that we're writing, uh, we're kind of 
flowing into not only the experiences that we're having, but the experiences that the world are having right now. And so we felt that in order to do that, we had to crank the dial a little bit darker in order to, one, get out our inner angst, but two, um, try and speak what our you know, all of our culture is dealing with right now. And so that's kind of where we're coming from. And we're really excited to get some of these new, this new music out there in the world. But, you know, we're going to wait. We want to give Simple an entire year so people can hear it and, and really grasp what we're doing. I guess you're going to be the angry walrus now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't call myself angry at it, uh, unless I'm in L.A. traffic. But um, with that said, I, I would just say that, you know, look out for um, – the different emotions that we're trying to draw because we're, yeah. we're all about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like any famous painter or anything like that, you know, they have, like Picasso had his blue period versus other eras where, you know, he felt differently and it came through in his art. And so musically it translates the same way, you know. Uh, you know, you can look at somebody like Tom York and you see what Radiohead does for one record and then you check another record or maybe his solo stuff and you go, wow, that's like, you know, it's still Tom York kind of thing, but it, it really went in a different direction. It's like, well, he's not feeling the same as he was when he put out that last record, right? So, I mean, it kind of, it, this record is keeping up with us and kind of how we've been able to deal with the times changing. And we feel like there's a lot of uh, room in there for, for like the general population to kind of level with us on that. You know, we kind of touched down on some very like general topics. Yeah, and I mean, uh, segueing into another thing that we've been trying to really work <clears throat> on is, you know, we found, or we have been finding that, um, you know, sometimes when people are listening to music in the current state of the world, um, they're not paying attention to the art and the music, you know, and so we've kind of approached this album with a completely new, uh, we call it anti-boy band marketing. And so basically, like, if you go on our social media pages, if you go on our websites, the only time you're going to see us as our individual selves or as a band is if we're performing. So if you see um, any pictures of us or any footage, it's only going to be us playing our music. Otherwise, all of our photos of us as a band and all of our um, branding, our, our overall marketing throughout the process of our um, socials is is no faced. And so we've been having a lot of fun with it, you know, partially because we were sick of doing the same old photo shoots with the face paint, you know, it just, it's so posed, you know, and we wanted to go out there. So we started it with 30 different uh, scenarios, 30 different scenes with 30 different things covering our faces all over the board, you know, from serious like mirrors and cameras and instruments to like funny, like, bags of chips and we made a we made burritos out of towels that were wrapped in tin foil like just stupid stuff but we just had a lot of fun with it and since then it has just grown into this really beautiful thing along with that we um we have been kind of making it so that the walrus is a character that you follow at each venue so rather than us kind of going up and saying hey we're here chicago at reggie's yeah, or even here at WZRD, like we have, uh, we take a picture of our walrus, and he's like a comic book character. He's, I mean, eventually I could even see us having a physical comic book of this character because it's been so much fun that I um, have been just trying to dream up, you know, what would the walrus do? Who is this character? Why is he who he is? And so with that, I mean, this this anti boy band marketing, what we're trying to do, and going back to what I was saying about, you know, try and read into the emotions that we're putting out there is that. We are excited to create this art, and we want people to focus on the things that we are really putting time and effort into, whether that's the music or the creation of these different imagery type things, you know? Well, people could check out the Walrus uh, tonight at Reggie's. Uh, what time do you guys... Uh the stage. So yeah, we're playing at Reggie's tonight at 9.30. Um, I know that we're playing with some local bands too, and the doors are open around 8 p.m. So definitely, um, you know, come out and support live music. I know that it's Sunday, but we promise you that we will not let you down. Sounds good. If you want to play somewhere, that'd be awesome. Yeah, cool. Cool, we're going to play two more songs. These are